Armando Hasurungan Biology and Medicine videos, please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos, visit Facebook Armando Hasurungan, like, and you can ask questions here, answer questions, and post some interesting things such as your artworks, please. And you can also change the quality settings of this video to the highest one for better graphics. This video, we will look at passive diffusion. And there are two types of passive diffusion. There is simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion, both which do not require energy. Diffusion is defined as the movement of molecules of any substance so that they spread out evenly into an um, available space. And this is from Campbell Biology Book. So for example, if we have this container containing a solution, a solution um, contains one or more molecules. That's what defines a solution. And in a solution, we have molecules, also known as solutes. So these are solutes, the orange and red things. And we have the solvent, which is a dissolving agent of the solute, or what basically the solute is inside. And this solution is actually an aqueous solution because the solvent is actually water, essentially. So I'll give you an example of a diffusion of one solute, of one molecule, inside an aqueous solution. For example, we have this container with a permeable membrane. And we have these solutes, these molecules, on one side to the left. And we have eight molecules. And it is inside an aqueous solution. So it's the solvent is water. So molecules will randomly move all over. They will move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. So in this case, there are higher concentrations on the left. So it will move to a lower concentration on the right. So the net diffusion of these molecules will move to the right. So this is what it will look like um, during the process. So as you can see, there's five solutes on the left and there's three solutes on the right. And molecules, these solutes, will move down their concentration gradient. Same thing, moving from a higher concentration to a, moving to a lower concentration. So that net diffusion is still to the right because there are more molecules on the left, so they will move to the right. Now, after some time, these molecules or solutes will just keep randomly moving, but essentially they will reach equilibrium, you can say. So this dynamic equilibrium, the solutes, those molecules will continue moving at an equal rate. So basically, there's always usually a balanced uh, amount on either side. So there's equal. And this is basically what diffusion does. So another example, let's just say we're looking at uh, an example of diffusion of two solutes, not one, but two. So again, we have a container with the solutes in, uh, separated by a permeable membrane in an aqueous solution. So the solvent is water. So we have solute one, you can say, which is red, and another solute, which is orange. So there's more orange on the left, and there's more red um, solutes on the right. So these molecules will start randomly moving. And the net diffusion, remember, of orange is from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. So the orange is moving to the right, and the red molecules, molecule 2, is moving to the left because they're low concentrated there. Now, if we progress, we can see that these molecules are starting to even out. They're still randomly moving. However, there's still more red in the right, and there's still more orange in the left. So the diffusion process is still occurring. And so the orange will still have a net diffusion moving to the right, and the red molecule, molecule 2, will have a net diffusion to moving to the left. And as time goes by, the diffusion keeps continuing, and the molecules will begin to even out. So here in this picture, we have four oranges on the left and four oranges on the right, and also four, orange, uh, four reds on the right and four reds on the left. And they just keep moving, moving at equal rates, you can say. So, so there's equilibrium. And this is essentially what diffusion does. It tries to balance uh, the number of molecules within a permeable, permeable membrane. Now let's look at facilitated diffusion, which is also a type of passive diffusion. It is exactly like simple diffusion that we just talked about, except that it has the help of protein transporters. So diffusion of polar molecules or ions, which are the solutes, um, by a protein transporter. So for example, if we have an aqueous solution here again, and we have the permeable membrane, right, where the solutes can move through, and we have the solutes here. As you can see, the red solute is more highly concentrated on the left, and so there's an, we expect to see a net, net diffusion this way. However, these solutes, these 
solutes are probably charged or polar, so they cannot cross the permeable membrane and so require a protein transporter. And this is what facilitated diffusion is. So in this case, we can see that the solutes are, are balancing out into equilibrium through the help of this protein transporter. And this is facilitated diffusion. There are a few types of proteins which carry out facilitated diffusion. And we'll look, we look at two main ones. So here we have a lipid bilayer. Here we have the outside of the cell. And we have here the inside of the cell. And we can see that solutes are highly concentrated on the outside in respect with the inside. So low concentrated solutes on the inside. And the solutes, as we know in diffusion, must move down their concentration gradient. And that is what diffusion is. And so the two types of protein transporters which help with facilitated diffusion are the channel proteins and the carrier proteins. We'll talk about the channel protein first. And the channel protein essentially allows movement of a particular solute moving from an area of high concentration to an area of lower concentration. And now there are actually different, there are different types of these channel proteins. For example, if I draw another diagram here, the lipid bilayer, we have a simple channel protein which allows just a solute to move through from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration. Simple. However, there is another type of channel protein which is gated. And this type of protein can be opened by a chemical. So when the chemical binds, it allows the solute to move through or from an electrical stimulus. So uh, if there is a di difference in charge across the membrane, this uh, gated ion channel or protein channel will open allowing the solute to move through. So chemical or electrical stimulus. And now the other protein transport which assists in facilitated diffusion is the carrier protein, which essentially allows a specific solute to bind to a binding site on the carrier protein. And when it binds, this carrier protein will flip over, releasing it to the inside. So it moves from the outside, the solute binds to the protein, and the protein will flip, allowing the solute to move inside. Simple. Now, diffusion is a spontaneous process, but it does require energy, even if it's simple. So here we have a passive, uh, this passive type of diffusion. Here we have a lipid membrane again, the extracellular fluid here, the outside, and the intracellular fluid here, the inside. So for example, we have a solute, and it's obviously covered in water, you can say, water surrounding it. And as the solute progresses and wants to diffuse this membrane, the water will be released, and the solute will be inside the uh, uh, inner leaflets. And then the solute will pass through and be again encaged by water molecules. Now, if we just draw a graph of the energy used and required in this process. Now, as the solute first passes through the outer leaflet, the free energy, the Gibbs free energy is positive, And so energy is required. And this is a simple diffusion without a transporter, remember. And as the solute passes through the fatty acid tails, it slowly decreases, but then it increases again as it passes through the inner leaflet. But this is because it actually wants to um, leave this hydrophobic area. And as it leaves to the extracellular fluid, the Gibbs free energy will decrease again back to where it was initially. And so there you can say there's equilibrium. Now if we compare this simple diffusion without a transporter to a diffusion with the help of a transporter, see the solute going through the protein transporter, not the lipid membrane. And the Gibbs free energy of going through transport is much more lower than the Gibbs free energy of simple diffusion. So you can say that it saves energy. And again, it increases as the solute goes firstly initially through the protein transporter and then decreases again once it leaves the protein. So now let's look at the mechanism of facilitated diffusion and how it relates to the free energy more closely, how it saves energy, you can say. So here again we have the graph and the change in Gibbs free energy is on the y-axis. Let's just say we're an erythrocyte plasma membrane and in the erythrocyte plasma membrane there's a transporter carrier called GLUT1 which allows glucose to come in. So let's just say glucose from the outside goes into this GLUT1 transporter. The Gibbs free energy will become positive because you need energy as the glucose comes in. And once the glucose is bound, this Gibbs free energy will start to decrease and stabilize, you can say. And then we'll just say these two transporters are both in position one. Then this transporter, GLUT1 transporter, moves to position two. So it flips over. 
and there's still a positive change in Gibbs free energy. But then, it's still in position 2, as a carrier transporter releases the solute, there is energy required, so the free energy increases slightly. But then, as the carrier flips back over and completes this uh, transaction, you can say, the Gibbs free energy decreases back to its original position. And so this cycle, or this carrier protein, can continue this cycle once again, bringing in glucose. I hope that made sense, and that ends this video. Um, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and the next video we'll look at active transporters. Thank you very much for watching.